This is a short note on the boundary conditions that are used in simulations and the minimum image convention. The correct treatment of boundary and boundary effects is quite important for simulation methods because uh, we want to calculate macroscopic properties from a very small number of particles. Um, so think for example that you are simulating a box of water which has a volume equal to 1 liter. This box will contain about 3.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 25 molecules. If you look at the effect of the walls, which might be a solid wall, on the properties of the individual molecules of water, the effect of the wall will probably extend to about 10 diameters of water molecules. So this is a very small length, maybe about 10 multiplied by 2.5 angstroms, it's about 25 angstroms. And then the number of water molecules which are affected by the wall then are those in this region. And this number will be about 2 into 10 power 19 molecules which are affected by the wall. So essentially only 1 in 10 to the power of 6 molecules is affected by the wall. So this is okay. However, our simulations will only contain about let's say 10,000 water molecules. In your protein simulation you have 6,000 water molecules. So we cannot have a solid wall because almost every molecule in the system will be affected by the wall itself. So in simulations we use something called periodic boundary conditions or PBC. So you must have noticed this option in your MDP files which says PBC equals XYZ. So what is periodic boundary conditions? So think of a central simulation box which has a few particles. Then there is one particle here which is going out of the box in this direction and there's another particle here which has a velocity in this direction. What we do is we replicate this box infinitely in all directions. So in x, y and z. So we have copies of these particles in all boxes. And also on the left here. So what we do is we say that every time a particle leaves the box, let's say this particle leaves in this direction, the particle from the nearest periodic image enters the box from this direction. Similarly, if this particle x leaves the box in this direction, then the particle from the adjacent periodic box will enter from this direction. So essentially we have information from an infinite number of particles and we have no solid walls. Of course this has limitations and these we'll discuss in class when we meet. Um, what I want you to think about is to write an algorithm to implement periodic boundary conditions. So how will you update the position of this particle when it moves outside the box? So you can think of this as position 0 and this as position L, the length of the box. So what happens to the position of the ith particle when it leaves the box? How do you update it? So write an algorithm to implement, P implement PBC to update the position of particle i and also of particle 
j which is represented by an x here so this is your homework since we are using periodic boundary conditions we have to be careful about our interactions and we use the minimum image convention which states that each atom will see at most only one image of other particles of other atoms so let's say you have a simulation box like this and the interact particle with which you are calculating interactions is this one and let's make an image of this periodic box So this is my central simulation box and everything else is a periodic image. So this particle has a periodic image here. And let us say it is interacting with some other particles which I am denoting by x. And let us say there is another particle called, which I denote by the square somewhere here. And this is the cutoff radius of interactions of this particle. Now there is an image of this particle inside the cutoff radius, non-bonded cutoff radius of this particle. So at every step when you are calculating interactions of particle i, you have to calculate them with interactions with this particle, with this particle, with this particle, but also with this particle here although in the main simulation box this particle is very far away and outside the non-bonded cutoff radius of this particle of my central particle still its image is close to our particle of interest so therefore you have to calculate the interactions of this particle with then with this particle as well here is something you can think about so this is the cutoff radius rc what happens when rc is greater than half the length of the box so what happens when the non bonded cutoff radius is more than half the length of the box this is your the second thing that you should think about at home so this was a short note about periodic boundary conditions